This is 70 year old gentleman who is a retired civil servant, came to our outpatient facility in June of 2016. He was known diabetic, was complaining of some weakness and loss of appetite. There was nothing remarkable on his examination. We ran some blood tests, and as you can see in this slide, he has picture of mildly elevated bilirubin, but his AST and ALT was high, suggesting transaminitis that he has inflamed liver. Abdominal ultrasound was showing some steatosis. Considering these raised liver function tests, we decided to run viral screen and he was surface antigen positive. He had IgM antibody positive and his DNA was high. So we labeled him acute hepatitis B. So 70 year old gentleman, diabetic, and picture of acute viral hepatitis B. Should we treat this individual? And if yes, with what medication? Interferon or nucleoside nucleotide analog? So ladies and gentlemen, what's the appropriate definition of severe acute hepatitis B? It's a recent onset of jaundice with coagulopathy. And if we treat these individuals in acute, severe acute viral hepatitis with this medication, whichever is nucleoside, nucleotide analog, there is a downside. They do not get their rate of seroconversion for surface antigen is low. So why we want to treat acute viral hepatitis B patient? We just want to make sure that they have good quality of life and they do not go on to chronicity. And in general, as Professor Farooqi mentioned in his talk, 80 to 95% people, adults, with viral hepatitis B, they recover. They do not go on to chronicity. And they basically do not need treatment. But the individual or patients who have acute viral hepatitis with coagulopathy and raised bilirubin, they need treatment or even sometimes we have to do liver transplant. Actually, we did not treat this individual. He hold, was holding on himself. There was a discussion with the family, went home. And then he returned after six months with this picture. So of course, he went from acute viral hepatitis, recovered, symptomatically, but develop chronic hepatitis B. So it's a little unusual. I wish to go through with you, what's the chances if you have exposure to viral hepatitis and how many age group or people will go on to chronicity. Neonates close to 80%, infants 60%, children 20% and adults. Incidence of chronic, developing chronic hepatitis B is very low. I just wish to share with you this finding. If your patient have acute viral hepatitis and he is male, above 50, and asymptomatic, the rate of chronicity is higher. HIV positive individuals have higher rate of going from acute to chronic viral hepatitis. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to share this new nomenclature for chronic hepatitis. Previously, we used to call immune tolerant and immune reactive, but now we talk about hepatitis B is divided into two categories, E antigen positive and E antigen negative. And then we talk about chronic HBV infection or chronic hepatitis B. We need actually three things to understand whether we are dealing with infection or hepatitis. And that is surface antigen, E antigen, DNA level, and liver health. As you can see in this slide, if you have high surface antigen, E antigen positive, 
DN is more than 10 log seven international units and liver health is normal on fibro scan or APRI or FIB4 score. So we call them chronic infection. There is infection, but there is no inflammation or damage to the liver. If these all parameters change into some high ALT level and there is some damage to the liver, we call it chronic hepatitis B. And same holds true for E antigen negative people. So we divide in 2020 hepatitis B into two categories, E antigen positive, E antigen negative. Differentiate between infection and hepatitis is we do three numbers. And especially if everything is raised, but ALT is normal and liver Parenchyma does not show any damage, we call it infection. If there is high ALT and damage to liver, we call it hepatitis. So this gentleman came with chronic hepatitis B, what we should do with, for him? Shall we do a liver biopsy, fibro scan, or without fibrosis assessment? So ladies and gentlemen, it's very important. We need to understand the liver health of the patient. Fibrosis, and cirrhosis, we have different categories of treatment and then the duration of treatment. Liver biopsy is usually not done unless you are considering some liver storage diseases or some other problems. So this is European Association for Study of Liver Diseases guidelines for chronic hepatitis B. Any patient who is E antigen positive or negative who has more than 2,000 international units of PC, DNA, ALT, up twice upper normal, and some degree of fibrosis or necroinflammation on the liver needs treatment. All cirrhotic with hepatitis B needs treatment. And if you have family history of hepatocellular CA, regardless what your liver health is, if you are PCR positive and ALT is normal or high, you need treatment. So what are the antiviral agents available to us? There is long list, but practically speaking, there are three drugs, TDF and Tecavir and TEF. Both have efficacy advantages, and I will walk with you which one we should be using and why. If you have circumstances where patient have in TECA VRT, denofovir before, it will be more appropriate choice for telfenamide if your patient is elderly, as our individual was. He has bone disease like steroid use and uh, if there is alteration of renal function. In 2020, telfenamide, TF is the drug of choice in these groups. So as you can see, the elderly, cirrhotic, um, people who are osteoporotic and who has renal impairment, this is a study where it shows showing telfenamide versus TDF and bone mineral density, hip and spine. It's better if we use TEF versus TDF. And this is the slide showing GFR level, how with TEF they are better than TDF. Coming back to our patient, remember he came to us in 2016. TEF was not available. We started him on Intecavir. He did very well. And in a year follow up, his LFTs are normal. And now, as we speak, the gentleman is 74. He is doing very well and he is on TEF and staying free of trouble, no cirrhosis, and uh, he does not have any petrocellular CA. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the first case I was talking, acute viral hepatitis in 70 year old individual. So we should not be forgetting age and then choice of our medication. I wish to quickly go through with this 27 year old pregnant woman. She came to us, she was 16 week pregnant, and this is her liver profile. She was basically 
positive for PCR and LFTs were with the normal limit and her clinical examination was unremarkable. How we manage? As Professor Farooqi has mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, that perinatal transmission, mother to child, infant is 90%. So this is the biggest route of transmission of hepatitis B. We should be very careful about. And 90% transmission and newborn and infants, they both have high rate of turning into chronic hepatitis. Then if we do HBB vaccination, and as you can see, incidence of E antigen positive and E antigen negative individual, and blue line is placebo and orange is vaccine. So there is a remarkable difference. In E antigen positive population, it's very effective, but E antigen negative, the question of vaccine is rather not very helpful. So if we want to prevent mother to child transmission, combining HBV vaccine with HBIG, again, it's very good, but still close to 20% people still get hepatitis B. Again, I'm showing with you HBIG with vaccine placebo, it's very helpful, but this is not the complete answer. We should not be forgetting if we are giving vaccine and HBIG and think the day is done and we are celebrating victory. It's not the case. The mother who have high DNA level, their incidence of transmitting hepatitis B to their infants is very high, as you can see. So who are the individual who are high risk to transfer virus to infants is E antigen positive mom who have high mat maternal DNA level. If we gave even HBIG and vaccine up to 20% vaccine failure, especially in E antigen positive. So let me recapitulate ladies and gentlemen. If your patient, pregnant lady who is E antigen positive and high viral load, even if we give them HBIG and vaccine, there is 20%, which is a big number, that they can transmit virus to their infant. So what we do with those patients? We have a history of treating pregnant women with hepatitis B. Lumovidine was the first drug used, but it has high incidence of resistance, and same was with telbuvidine. In 2020, the only drug we should be using is TDF, tenofovir, nothing else. So this is antiviral therapy to reduce mother-child transmission, and I'm showing lemovidine. Blue is control and orange is the antiviral. And as you can see, the most effective drug is tenofovir. I still see some patient on telbuvidine for some interesting reason, and it's not very safe in terms of resistance. So as the study showed, tenofovir should be there. So ladies and gentlemen, in summary, when we deal with acute hepatitis people, we should be keeping B in mind. Progression from acute hepatitis to chronic hepatitis B is more common in older adults, as I have shown you the individual 70-year-old civil servant I shared with you. Th therapy in acute hepatitis B is very challenging. It should be individualized. These are the three drugs we can use, but drug of choice should be TEF, telfenamide, and intecavir for elderly individuals. Long-term nucleotides can suppress your virus load. They reduce inflammation and fibrosis, reduce the risk of hepatocellular disease and liver-related events, reduce mortality. Safety and long-term therapy should be considered when we are giving drugs to elderly individuals with renal problem and osteoporosis. 
And I thank you so very kindly for patient listening.